Well, kia ora tēnā koutou katoa. It's Rachel Froggatt here, Chief Executive of Women in Sport Aotearoa here in New Zealand and Secretary General of the International Working Group on Women in Sport. And welcome to our latest Insight Bites with our partners at the Trans-Tasman Business Circle. Today, uh, we've got a really interesting guest with us. Um, some, it's actually a part of the, the sports sector we haven't really explored um, since the beginning of this COVID challenge that we're all in at the minute. So I'm um, absolutely delighted today to welcome Michelle Wood, the Performance Services Manager at Snow Sports New Zealand. Welcome, Michelle. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks for having me on. Well, first of all, how are you? We're, we're sort of uh, in New Zealand uh, for the rest of the world watching in. Uh, we're sort of semi post COVID. We're in a strange uh, world where we're level one and we're just about normal, but the borders are closed. So what's the uh, personal journey been like for you, Michelle, over the last couple of months? Yeah, a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of feels like things are somewhat back to normal here, which is quite weird given what's going on in the rest of the world. Um, yeah, I guess looking back at what, um, you know, what the level four, level three and four was like for us as, as a family, you know, we, we, we got through it okay. We, we, um, um, we kind of took a little while to get into our groove of both my husband and I working at home with a couple of preschools running around. So it was a, it was a busy time as it was for a lot of people, but we, you know, we're really lucky to have uh, awesome colleagues that we work with and really understanding employers that know that family comes first. So once we got the kind of first couple of weeks done and we, you know, we were probably, um, I guess, putting a bit much pressure on ourselves to, to try and do everything. Um, and yeah, we actually got into a really nice groove and, and, and actually enjoyed it. And kind of looking back, it was, it was just a really nice time at home with the kids and, you know, feeling lucky that we've both got jobs and our health and that as a country, we're doing pretty well. Well, I, we were just joking offline before we started that it was kind of trial by fire for you in some ways because you've actually only been in this role since January. So, yeah. you know, imagine things have changed quite drastically. So maybe talk us through a little bit about what your job is and then what you've been dealing with, you know, since this all kicked off. Yeah, yeah. So the role I think you mentioned is performance services manager. So it was a new role that was created. Um, and I know that, you know, the decision was made to put a bit more focus into this area leading into into Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics. And so the, the main part of my role is working with our athlete performance support team that work with the athletes and coaches and, and just leading that group of people. And the, you know, the main purpose is to really connect them and with the coaches a bit better and make sure that they have that role clarity that they need in the direction of what they're doing in each campaign, like down to that really detailed level. Um, and so there's, you know, there's that side of it with the, we have the HPSNZ um, support services that, that they provide us. So we've got contracted and employed people in the sports science, sports medicine uh, fields. And, and then we've also got our sports specific support staff. So we've got the WAX Tech um, and Landing Bag Manager that, that fall under my role as well. Um, and so I guess with any new role, it's evolving. And, um, you know, we're, we're kind of going through a process at the moment of, you know, getting out the job description and looking at, is, am I doing kind of what, what we set out to in, in the beginning? Uh, and and there, are, there are parts of the role that are evolving and there's, there's a lot of behind the scenes work that I'm involved in as well, just with the, you know, the general running of the, of the HP program um, and kind of that link into HPCZ as well. And obviously, I think a lot of people would be aware, you know, the Olympic and Paralympic cycle is, is a constant. You know, every four years, mm -hmm. you're getting the cycle again. And we're, two, we're just under two years out from Beijing 2022. Yeah. You know, how has COVID impacted planning? You know, it, it really is literally at this point that you're, you're starting the build. You know, this would be where you'd be starting to begin towards the Games. And mm. at the moment, the Games are, are still on. And as far as we know, they're still happening. But how do you plan for something that, you know, has a, a question mark over the top of it? Yeah, it is, it is really difficult. I mean, we, you know, we got everyone back in March. It was the tail end of our season. So there were a few events that they unfortunately did miss. But got everyone back and you know they missed a couple of the spring training camps that they normally go to but at the moment it's fine because we are we're in our winter we, we can ski we've got good snow we can snowboard you know and so everyone everyone's pretty happy and it, it's going okay but the the challenge for us is when we can get, get people back on a plane again and so we're we're due to to kick off northern hemisphere season november um and that's it's you know it's it's still in the plans to do that um, but we, you know, we're planning for 
kind of plan A, B, and C, um, depending on, on on when we can get on a plane, really. So, and it, it does make it difficult to plan for because we've got, you know, we've got staff that have other commitments as well, and it, even just looking at the the time that quarantine adds on to a trip, you know, we, we're not going to be able to do those quick, you know, send send staff over to pop overseas for a couple of weeks because that turns into a month trip for them. So. We're kind of trying to just plan plan what we can at the moment, but have flexibility within that. Um, just just knowing that things will things will evolve over the next few months. And obviously, the the last Winter Olympics and Paralympics were pretty successful for New Zealand. You know, the program has been growing dramatically yep. over the, the last couple of cycles, and we're heading towards Beijing with some amazing athletes. You know, in in training. So maybe give us a bit of a picture of you know if all goes well and everything pans out as we as we hope. What can we expect from the campaign? Yeah, I mean, I think um, we've got like you said. You know, we had a really successful campaign, twenty eighteen Pyeongchang. Um, and, and just hoping to build on that really we've got we've got some good depth coming through so we're we've we, you know we've still got obviously our medalists from Pyeongchang in the program and they will be for a while they're so young um, but we've also got some some young athletes coming through as well which is exciting um, in the able-bodied space and, and the adaptive space as well um, so we're, we're pretty excited about that and um, team size you know we'll have to wait and see because the the window for qualification will be from November onwards so we'll know a bit more once we get through this, this, you know, upcoming Northern Hemisphere season about how big the team size will be. But definitely hoping to have a, a few first time uh, Olympians and Paralympians Olympians as well, you know, who will kind of get that experience to go on for the next cycle too. And obviously I have a bit of an affinity with the Paralympic program, having having worked with Paralympics New Zealand for several years. And yeah. Pyeongchang was really exciting in terms of um, watching the performances. And obviously Adam Hall is outstanding um, yeah. again. New Zealand standpoint, um, as well as Corey Peters and Carl Murphy, but we we used to lament the fact that we didn't have any female Paralympians representing. Yeah. Them, but I, I hear there's some some changes coming through, and there's some emerging uh, athletes coming through. We should be watching out for. Yeah, yeah, we do have. I mean, we're hoping to have uh, probably one more athlete carded from October onwards, um, who's doing great. And yeah, you're right. We do have a couple of female athletes coming through, probably more in that pre. HPAD space, so I think we need to wait and see how that how those athletes go, uh, you know, over the upcoming season and, and and see what they can do. They're still pretty young and, and pretty new, so. Um, but yeah, definitely, um, you know, and talking to Jane Stevenson, you know, who manages our adaptive program. Um, we've got the adaptive snow sports festival coming up this weekend, and um, or sorry, coming next weekend, and there's a development camp as part of that, and I think we've got we've got five out of the six or six out of the seven or something of female, female athletes coming. So there's definitely, definitely some good talent coming through in that space, which is exciting. Well, I just think um, it'd be amazing to have a, a female sit skier because I used to watch Corey, you know, as a, a sit yeah. skier. Yeah. And mental, they're absolutely mental, you know, going down a mountain. Incredible. Ski sitting on it is is crazy, but um, it's just such a cool thing to watch as a competitive sport as well. Um, it is, yeah, yeah. And we're lucky to have such great role models and you know, people like Adam and Corey, they're still going, and Carl, who's now retired. And, yeah. yeah, exactly. And obviously, the the government response to, to COVID has, has been really strong and, and very quick, and um, that you guys, for, you know, Snow Sports New Zealand, have received um, support directly. I think it'd be, be great to kind of talk through what that means for you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're, we're really feeling really fortunate that we were able to to access some of that resource that came through in the COVID response fund from Sport New Zealand. So we were in quite a difficult situation kind of coming into our Southern Hemisphere winter. And um, I guess firstly, not knowing if the ski fields would be able to open. Um, you know, there was that period of time during level four where that, that was just all uncertain up in the air. And they, even if it, we were at level two, they still weren't sure if, if they could open. So, um, and if it would be financially viable for them without the international market coming in, that, you know that's that's pretty tough obviously they rely on on international tourism pretty heavily so we you know we were in a position where um where we're having to pay for some of the build of the daily training environment up at Cardrona that we haven't had to in the past um just because it, it's it's so tough for them at the moment and for any any ski resort without that international market so we were really lucky to get that money from Sport New Zealand and that that's gone into um we'll be building a half pipe in August um we've got our landing bag up and running already um, the rail project's done, we've got a few other features like that so that the athletes can 
actually get up there and get some quality training and, and that you know that was even a question mark a few months ago so pretty excited to to have to have that resource now um, and the other thing we're working on and thinking kind of into the future as well and with the I guess with the uncertainty around international travel and also knowing the cost of international travel and the future is going to be more we're really looking at what we can do to provide a new uh, I guess a better daily training environment in New Zealand um, and part of that is where we're scoping out a project at the moment to build a, a dry slope training facility um, and that's you know looking at looking around the world most of our competitors have, have access to something like that now and we we normally just jump on a plane and we go somewhere else to access it and that's that's not as realistic to do these days so we're we're trying hard on that and um yeah it's I mean, it's been on the list for a while, but I think it's just really come to the forefront now because of COVID that we really need this facility. So we are working on, like I said, scoping that out and trying to access some funding for Sport New Zealand if we can for that, because it is, it's going to be crucial to or to the Beijing campaigns, but also also beyond as well and getting those young kids to to be able to progress right through and, and not have to jump on a plane to do that. It's going to be pretty crucial for us. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Because these these whilst COVID has been really challenging, in some ways there are potential silver linings, you know, in escalating certain plans that you already yep. wanted to do, but actually now have to do it because it becomes such a critical part of the pathway um, forward. And uh, so perhaps um, we actually may end up with benefits to the to the winter program because of COVID, which is a, a funny exactly. thing to talk about, really. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right, I think we could, yeah. yeah. So um, you yourself, you've been in high performance, um, you know, the high performance world for quite a number of years, previously at Athletics New Zealand and, and a few other roles, you know, what's your journey been like, you know, as, as, a, as a leader coming through the system and, and, and landing where you are now? Yeah, so I, I was at Athletics New Zealand, like you mentioned, for 10 years um, leading into this role and, and the high performance program as well. And yeah, went through, I guess, quite a, quite a journey, you know, that was my literally my first job. I was a, um, a cyclist before that, um, living and racing overseas and, and went, went back and studied and, and then got, got this job at Athletics New Zealand that it kind of evolved over, over the 10 years. So um, initially started out more as an athlete support role and then more recently it was uh, leading the coaches that, um, that were employed in the high performance program as well as looking after the athlete performance support space too. So yeah, it was, um, yeah, I mean, amazing opportunity and a, a great, you know, team of people to work with. And, um, you know, I was very comfortable there. It was definitely in my comfort zone. And that, that was, that was part of the, I guess the attraction with this role is that I don't have a, I don't have a background in snow sports. Um, I know high performance really well and I know the sporting system in New Zealand really well. And I, I wasn't looking to move on, but it was just something that was really exciting about the role and the, I think the opportunity, I guess, and the potential that snow sports have has, you know, really excited me and I, I thought I could help. So, um, yeah, it kind of took a leap of faith and, and, and applied for the role and, um, yeah, so based in Auckland though, so that, that's kind of one of the challenges we're working through is, is me being in Auckland away from the rest of the team, travelling down once a month, but there are you know, there are advantages to that and that we do have a presence in Auckland and at HPCNZ, which is really good. And a lot of the people I'm dealing with are actually at HPCNZ in Auckland. So that, that side of it's quite nice. It's just trying to get down to Wanaka enough to spend enough time with the team, you know, to um, to build those relationships. And that, that was tough over COVID because I was, you know, literally building relationships over Zoom, which is, uh, which is pretty hard to do. I think we're, we're all getting a little bit better at that, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think I think so. We, we've definitely all adjusted a bit, haven't we? I totally, I totally agree. And I, I guess, you know, a, a question I always like to ask is, you know, you've, you've had a really successful journey through the high performance system, but it still can be a challenging environment for, for women coming into roles in, in mm -hmm. what have quite a, a male-dominated world. You know, if, if, if anyone was watching this and they were thinking that this was a direction they wanted to take with their career or a move they wanted to, 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 to do. What advice or what stories could you share that, you know, perhaps they should think about? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I, I, um, I guess, I, I, you know, I feel quite fortunate to have been working with really supportive people during my time at Athletics. So I had two children during that time and had, you know, time, time off at home and coming back part-time and that, you know, that was a big thing for me. That's why, you know, I 
was so loyal and, and you know stayed around for so long because it was such a good supportive environment and I, I know not everyone gets that which is really tough um, and I think you know you see you see full-time roles come up and I think I think maybe a lot of females just aren't maybe they're not stupid enough like me to to apply for a full-time role based in another city or another town um, but yeah I think it's just you know as a as a system supporting females to kind of step up and, and apply for those leadership roles when they do come up um, and you know we've got HPCZ have done a great job obviously in a lot of other organizations you know we've got um, Sonia Bola now leading you know the Women in Sport project at HPCZ and she's she's doing a really good job my position actually here is funded by the Women in Sport residency program so I'm part of I'm part of that group so we've got a leadership group a leadership cohort and a coaching cohort and we meet up regularly and we've got access to PD money which is great it's amazing opportunities that you know we haven't always had so um i think just you know as a i guess we've got things like that going on and just i think just you know supporting the females that are already in the system as well to, to have access so that they can apply for those roles when they when they do come up i think that's super important um but yeah i mean you look around now and there's there are i think you know i think there are a lot more females in, in leadership roles in sport than we have had in the past so hopefully that visibility is helping um, and people know that there is a pathway for them and opportunities and that it doesn't have to be your typical nine to five as well. I think that's the big thing is that I think more employers are getting more flexible on what they expect out of their employees. And I think that's really important because not all of us can work with your typical nine to five, you know, with other demands. So, yeah. Well, I think that um, it's so funny, these these little insight bites, they go so quickly because we're actually already at 15 minute mark, would you believe? So um, it's been absolutely amazing to talk to you, Michelle, and uh, really congratulations on the work that you're doing and, and really pushing you know, new boundaries and new frontiers for, for women in the high performance system, obviously, as you say, with the support of High Performance Sport New Zealand as well. Um, so if we were to sign off here and you were to give uh, one last piece of advice to anybody you know, looking to follow in your footsteps, what, what would that be? Put you on the spot. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, oh, I think just I think just take the opportunities that come up and yeah, I, I think looking back there's been um I think I've I've tried to kind of grab every opportunity I can with both hands. I think that's yeah, I, I think that's probably my big my biggest advice is, is is look out for you know, for what's out there and, and grab the opportunities when they come up and it'll work out, you know. I think I think there's always kind of the what ifs and but I, I think for I guess especially for females trying to get into into leadership roles is just just jump into it and give it a go. Yeah. Don't hesitate. Put yeah, yourself. exactly. A big message. Yep. Uh, it's been wonderful to be talking to uh, Michelle Wood, Performance Services Manager at Snow Sports New Zealand, in our latest Insight Bites in a partnership with the Trans Tasman Business Circle. Kakitiano. Thanks for having me. <laughs>